So this is my first adaptation, my first time behind the desk. And the reason that I wanted to be a part of Titus um, was because it was, it was coming um, because of the wordless Shakespeare series. They were eventually going to have to do Titus, and I thought now is as good as time as ever do it. Everyone in the company was kind of like itching to do it, and they're like, when are we doing Titus? I started with the teen company in 2011, went to adult company in 2012. I thought it was time to step behind the desk and see what I could do artistically. Walking in as an adapter, you're coming in from a completely, completely different vantage point. So now the idea isn't, okay, how do I flesh out this character? It's how do we build a foundation in which other people can do that. The design of Titus Andronicus has a number of different elements. So you'll see a, a bit of ancient Rome. You'll see some more primitive Goths. You'll see two different groups of people who are all vying for the same kind of power, whether they do it through subversion of the current power or through violence or revenge. Uh, it's, it's all anybody's game. Uh, however, uh, we thought that these themes worked on a number of levels, so you'll see modern influences as well as a more ancient tone to the show. This gives it a more global appeal and also it uh, has a more global statement. Because we wanted to do Titus without spilling a single drop of stage blood, um, we, we did have to get creative. When doing a bloodless show, the idea is to take blood and the imagery of it and try and figure out all the many textures that it can materialize on stage. And so we were trying to think about powders and sand, different ways that blood can be manipulated on stage without the actual liquid coming in. And so to incorporate the fabric that Eric has in his costumes, I add on some props that have these really heavy textures that still feel really gritty and slimy and uncomfortable to look at and so that, that violent uh, nature of it all is still there. But it's still not quite that liquid that you're used to seeing, especially in productions of Titus Andronicus. From a costume standpoint in a bloodless show, how do you get the effect of blood? Using the color red as a strong motif across the board in the show, which has sort of a subconscious effect. We have that idea in our mind where we're um, thinking about it, so therefore it's gonna be more real. I've also used a lot of red silk and flowing fabrics to simulate pooling and spurting of blood in many different ways. And you'll have to come and see to check it out. What I hope that we've achieved with this production is even though it is bloodless and wordless, it is not gratuitous in terms of storytelling. And it, it hits, I think it hits the right note.